somewhere on Copy.js. Yeah. You always hate Bootstrap, because I hate Bootstrap. Um, so what are us normal people meant to do when we hate Bootstrap ourselves? What else do we use? Um, that's the topic for tonight, basically. Um, I would not use Bootstrap if you paid me an awful lot of money. Um, and I don't know what you could possibly do. I get chocolate because I. Don't use Bootstrap. Come on. I don't use Bootstrap. Yeah. <laughs> this is easy. Um, so what I did is I asked around. I had a look around at what the alternatives are. Uh, I use no framework personally. Um, I just write all the code myself. Doesn't mean that I don't look at other people's code. I just make sure I maintain my own. Um, I work here at CXA. We're enterprise grade. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. I have chocolate, I want to eat it. This is not very good. <laughs> so the growl rules, if I turn it on, I have this is technical difficulty night tonight. The things you should be looking for in your CSS. It should have not broken accessibility. The whole thing with accessibility is it's by default in HTML. If you don't mess with it, then you get it for nothing, for the most part. When you're getting into some more complex interactions, you'd have to do some work. But for the most part, accessibility is free. Um, so this is the first thing. This framework should be up to date. It should be not using floats anymore and actually moving on to Flexbox or CSS Grid or something like that at some point in the future. Um, any framework that's still using floats to do a grid, you've got to really wonder what they're doing because you know, the world's moved far on past that. And it's not just um, that it's nice to use the new things. If you're still using floats, you're missing out on all this stuff. So if you're stuck with a framework that's not up to date, then you're losing out in what you're able to do on the site. Um, I'm generally against anything that's monolithic. Uh, monolithic means it does everything for you, it thinks for you. It, tell, it has lots of opinions and tells you exactly how everything should run. Um, a button must always have curves and always have this particular padding and that kind of thing. Uh, this is exactly how you render it. Uh, the consequences of a monolithic framework is it's hard to not look like that framework. And this is one of the big design criticisms of Bootstrap. Because Bootstrap looks like Bootstrap. If Bootstrap doesn't look like Bootstrap, someone has either spent an awful lot of work or they're not actually using Bootstrap. If you throw it to a designer and say Bootstrap, 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 you know right away. It's really easy to tell. Uh, actually, I should mention why Bootstrap does all these things wrong as well. Bootstrap is using Flex still. Bootstrap 4, which is still in alpha for some reason, um, is using Flexbox. Like, wow, welcome to this decade. Um, the accessibility in Bootstrap is okay. But given the magnitude of the project, OK is not really good enough. You can get sued. Your company could go bankrupt because someone sues you because you, you're not accessible. Um, apart from the human side of making our sites you know, nice for people. Um, so you don't want your company to go bankrupt because you chose Bootstrap and chose bad accessibility. It's not really something that happens in um, Asia at the moment, but it has been a big thing in Australia, UK, US. It will spread. <coughs> One of the consequences of a framework being monolithic is they're usually really heavy. Um, Bootstrap now lets you configure, so you can choose what you want to, but the reality of any configurable thing is no one ever chooses the settings. When Microsoft redesigned Office in 2007 and they introduced the ribbon, they have done, they always do a lot of research for Microsoft, which is probably one of the best things they ever do. Um, they found that I think 0.5% of anyone ever using Word ever configured anything. Like, that's ridiculous. No one goes to settings on average. I do, most of you probably do, but we're not normal. <laughs> we're weird. We're the crazy people that play around with stuff. Um, <clears throat> so the consequence of all that is basically too much configuration means it's going to be heavy. Bootstrap. Everyone will just like link to the CDN, get me the whole thing, I don't have to think about it anymore, or let the client worry about it, let them pay for their mobile bill. Here in Singapore, we have fast internet, which is cheap, we're lucky. Most of the world is not in that situation. 
If you're living in Bootstrap, you're charging your client for the privilege of using that framework every single time they load the page. That's not great. CDN's no excuse either because by the time someone comes to your site, their cache is cleared so they have to load the thing anyway. CDN's not a miracle cure. Moving on, assuming you don't want your site to look like Bootstrap, then you want it to be extensible. And with CSS, the key to that, unless you're using uh, CSS modules, is to have something that's namespaced because you don't want an overlap. If someone is using something called button as a class, I don't want to have to use the same class. So I'd rather have something that's got some unique identifier with that framework. That lets me go in there and change it and I don't have to worry about it. I can upgrade freely, I don't need to think about it anymore. Um, there are more things to extensibility and namespacing, but certainly for CSS it's probably the most critical. The last one is proper icons. Um, when font icons came in, they were awesome, kind of, because uh, you could use icons fairly quickly, but we now know there are a lot of problems with them. If the icon set doesn't load properly, the font set doesn't load, you get random characters thrown at you. There's no accessibility because you're throwing a random character to a, a person. Um, the fallbacks are nasty, like there, there are problems. They served the world fairly well for a while, but it's no longer the best solution. It hasn't been for some years. This kind of goes back to being up to date, but icons are one of those things that, that you really should get to move on. Okay. Uh, now, since I don't use these fr frameworks, what I'm talking about tonight is based on my research into them. If someone has used them and would like a chocolate, then please interrupt me at any point and we'll test out Wei Jing's throwing skills. Again, if she can't throw to you, then there's something wrong with the one. <laughs> professional basketball. Former professional basketball. <laughs> Still far better than I've ever thrown in my life. Uh, foundation is one of the ones that comes up often when you talk about things. It is a big framework. It's fairly monolithic. Um, it's been around for a while. They've, they've done a lot of work to optimize it. Uh, unlike Bootstrap, which is kind of founded, but there hasn't really been that much interest in development effort in Bootstrap for a while. So it's got some things going for it. Um, my favorite thing is it has ARIA support in its controls, and so it's actually accessible. I haven't tested it thoroughly. Uh, I just had a look through what I could see on the site, but it generally seems to work, and that's a really good thing. If you don't want to have to think about how your CSS is working, that's nice. Um, it does use presentational class names, so it calls buttons buttons and things like that. And this is not good. It's not extensible, it leads to bigger, bigger CSS libraries, it's pretty nasty. So if you're choosing a uh, foundation, you have to live with it. If they change something to something you don't like, then you're in trouble. If your client comes to you and says they need something different, it's going to cost you. This is the risk when you go with a monolithic framework. Um, I covered namespacing. It uses floats still for grids because we're in, it's not really the 90s, early 2010s. When did Blake's box become normal? It's been a while. A year ago, I think. It's about a year ago. A year ago. It's been, uh, anyway. But they're still using floats. So this, is, this is version 6 of Foundation. You'd think they'd be moving beyond that. There is no browser compatibility problem anymore. Uh, there's nothing else to think about. They do use icon fonts. They're still doing the old way of doing things. Um, on the balance, it's all right, it's quite monolithic. Uh, I wouldn't go near it because it is too monolithic, it's not extensible, the accessibility is nice. Does anyone use uh, Foundation here? How have you found it? Uh, it's lighter. It's light because it's, I think it's 65k for the CSS, 60-odd k for the JavaScript, something like that. I'm not going to do it with yeah, it's still amazing. Chocolate. Have a go. Oh, look at me. Would you recommend it? When it comes to Bootstrap, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're assuming yeah. everything is better than Bootstrap here. Because <laughs> this is basically the question. Like, you can write your own. Like, the people sitting here, we write our own CSS. Not everyone is us. We appreciate that. <laughs> So every criticism I'm leveraging here, throw it back at me. <laughs> what do I know? This is a skeleton. 
Skeleton is so great at marketing, they don't even have the name of the framework on this slide. <laughs> Um, the really good thing with Skeleton is it's really, really lightweight. Uh, it's down to a couple hundred lines of CSS, which is remarkable. It covers the basics. The idea is it is just a skeleton. It covers the core parts of what you need to get going. For me, if I was going to choose a framework, it would be something like this, where it doesn't prejudge anywhere beyond the basics, so you can customise as you like beyond that. Um, Lots of nice things. Uh, doesn't have namespacing, which is unfortunate, but that's kind of showing the age of the framework. Um, you'll note it says it's dead simple. We'll just remember that word dead because we'll be coming back to that in a minute. <laughs> and this is, there's more, more features coming soon, which is really nice, except it has a bit of an in the last two years. <laughs> so, more features coming soon, maybe never, because it, it is dead, unfortunately. Um, it was promising at one point, but unfortunately it's of no use to anyone anymore, unless you want to take it up and maintain it yourself. Why not? Moving on to pure CSS. Has anyone used Skeleton, actually? I should ask on each one. Pretty much sums up what happened to it. <laughs> Sorry. Pure CSS was written by Yahoo. Um, the idea of pure is very much along the same lines as normalize, as uh, skeleton, where they've taken normalize and they've just covered the basics. Um, you can't really see so well here, but they've got, I think it's like 6k gzips or something, or even 3. It's tiny. Uh, they've got base stuff, they've got a grid, basic forms, buttons, tables, and menus. You really shouldn't need much more than that to get going. Um, because you don't want to have to write a menu every time you start a new site, so it's nice to have something to get you going. So this, this is quite useful. Um, it is really small because it doesn't do much, but it, again, it covers the essentials of what you need. You don't really need to think about it. It has some namespacing, but it's a bit weird. Um, like they're a bit inconsistent about how they apply it. They're using pure dash in some areas and then not in others. Uh, considering the size of the library, that's quite remarkable. They've got such variation going on. Um, it doesn't, they don't, they don't do icons, so that's not relevant. They don't cover accessibility because it's just so basic, it doesn't even get into that realm. Has anyone used Pure before? You can claim you're having it at chocolate. Containing it at the moment, not Okay, chocolate. Right, right, right. There you go. Semantic UI. Um, semantic is another monolithic framework. It's a one size fits all. Come with us, we'll look after you. You never have to think again. I never had to do a lot of research into this. I heard of all of them only because people asked me about it. But this is the thing, yeah. Um, what's curious about semantic is their class naming structure. They're, if you've heard of Atomic CSS, where you're down to like really micro level names for everything. They're kind of along those lines. Um, now there are problems with Atomic CSS uh, in that it's really hard to work out what's going on. That's not so bad with Semantic because their class names are a little bit more of a boast. Not really, it's not Semantic. This is the big lie. The library itself in the structure is quite good. They have a fair amount of depth in there without getting too crazy. Their keyboard support is pretty poor, so the accessibility is basically in tatters, which for me kills any framework. If you can't manage keyboards, then you know, don't try. Um, it is monolithic, it covers everything for you. If you look at a framework and they start talking about theming, then you know you're in the wrong territory. Because if you're, if all you can ever do is add a little bit of modification on top of what's already there, then it's a monolithic framework. They're, they're making a lot of decisions for you already. Um, and the real problem with that is the effort involved in actually customizing is usually more than just writing the code yourself. CSS is not that hard in a good environment. When you have a, a framework making decisions for you, you're in a bad environment. So it can be a lot more effort than it's worth. This is one of, I've mentioned it before, it's one of the key problems to bootstrap. 
You can't make it look like anything else. The good thing with Symantec is because it's new, it covers the generic design elements that you need without too much effort. So you could throw it into a site right now and look okay. When the design trends change, you're stuck with it. But then you'd probably be redesigning by then, so it's not necessarily a bad thing. Anyone used this one before? <laughs> no chocolates. <laughs> Ulma, Alma, something. Ulma. It's modern, based on not modern Flexbox. <laughs> Um, the key thing is they're using Flexbox for their grids instead of floats. Wow. Not using CSS grid yet, which is too slow. It's not namespaced, which means you can't override anything. Um, but that's a button. Great. No custom anything. They're using Font Awesome for their icons because Font Awesome is not awesome. Uh, their accessibility was the worst out of all of these that I tested. Um, easy way to test is just throw your mouse away for half a second, and if you can use a site with a keyboard, then you know you're doing all right. Uh, I couldn't focus on anything in this site. It was terrible. Did, did you use Chrome or Firefox or Safari? Uh, I tested it in several. Yeah, because I tested my site recently on Safari, and I found out that Safari doesn't support like tabbing across links and form, most form elements by default. It only does tabbing. if you do you have elements. To, you have to it, configure it in yeah, the settings. The key element I have is for, yeah, I know. Um, it was for uh, tabs. Because I know how tabs work really well because I've, I've written decent tabs. <laughs> um, so I know, having written a tab control before, I know it inside out. You know, I can see when someone would paint the spec or not without having to look for it. Um, not even close. You couldn't even focus on anything. But that was basically tab, tab, and on the other page. It was unfortunate. Uh, anyone use Bulma? Anyone? Anyone even heard of Bulma? I haven't heard There you go. Chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Material design light. Uh, this, this one, material design, was actually for Sorry, for a kind of standard team for the whole entire Android app. Yeah, that's material design. This is a yeah. framework designed to use material design, so it's not a but Google product. It's, it's not only just one of uh, I, I think there's another CSS library. CSS framework library, also based on material design. But it's still basically the same idea. Um, material design, you've got Microsoft's, what's the new one they've just named it recently? It's not, uh, uh, is it F? F? No? They had Metro, Lewis, that's the one. They had Metro, they got a trademark dispute, so they called it something really awkward instead. But it was still Metro to everyone because Metro was a much nicer name. So if you've used Windows Phone, Windows 8 up using Metro, um, they're currently modifying their design moving towards Fluent, so it's like the next evolution from there. Apple have maintained the human interface guidelines since the 80s. And they've been publishing them on the internet since the 90s, since the internet came into existence. Google have got Material. Um, it's just an old design framework. If you use Material Design, you make your things look like Google. Great. You could make your things look like Microsoft. You could make them look like Apple if you want. It doesn't make you special. Um, it's following a lot of other trends. But basically, you're locked into that particular design trend. It's monolithic, so it will tell you exactly how everything should behave. Uh, it does have namespacing, which was nice. Um, the accessibility was terrible. Um, and the icons were appalling. Um, anyone come across this one, used to thought about it? I know one site. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not, not me, uh, I know one site which uses the material. <laughs> and that was the end of my research, basically, at this point. Excellent. Which brings me back to here. <laughs> Has anyone else got anything else they wanted to throw out? I mean, what other frameworks has anyone used that they've found useful? Or oh, does your organization organization actually have your own framework? Like, or are you all using Bootstrap? Oh. <laughs> then I'll throw it. Chocolate. Or are you using just a grid framework and not all the other things combined? Yeah, who wants chocolate? Come on, spill. 
Mark, you can speak. <laughs> Mark works with me, so he can just say that we don't use guidelines. I don't need any framework. You're on? Yeah. You're on standard? Oh, of course. Yeah, so that counts as a is a CXA framework then? Yeah, I guess. Right? It's a CXA framework. No one, no one else. What, what does anyone else use? Do you use a framework? Do you use your own? No, we don't. We'll see our own. Okay, so we're doing well. Last time I asked something like this to a talk uh, CSS audience, I got a lot of bootstraps thrown at me. Um, <laughs> yeah, people are not afraid of saying it anymore. They're like a closet bootstrap. Do you get chocolates? Sink. Like if you Each love bootstrap, you get a chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rewarding you with candy for uh, for your bootstrapness. Alright, um, that's me done. Thank you very much. Um, any questions about frameworks other than me just hating all of them? <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned name spacing. Yes. And uh, what, uh, what framework do you see recently that you were impressed by the name spacing? Um, it was one. <laughs> yeah, what do you like? Maybe I made a mistake because looking at my notes, I've got none. <laughs> <laughs> there was actually Pure. Where was Pure? Pure, Pure. Pure had some name spacing, but it was a bit wrong. Uh, it was really yeah, inconsistent. They have yeah. They don't have consistent name spacing. Yeah, and it's like it's a few. It's a few k, and they managed to go get inconsistent name spacing, which is bizarre. Um, name spacing. The idea is basically. Um, just like with any other language, you'll just have a couple of letters, dash something, and there's a namespace. Everything is now unique to that namespace. Really easy, you don't have to think about overriding anyone else's code. One of the other things that I haven't covered here is uh, globals. If you start modifying global CSS, then you're at risk. Bootstrap does this, which is annoying. So it, I've had to inherit sites that use Bootstrap and implement other things on top of them. So the first thing you do is basically counter all those bootstrap things that tell you how you know header should be displayed. But, yeah. Um, have you looked at uh, Angular Material? Sorry, so this is it? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> tell me about it. Um, I mean, I think it. I just started learning Angular at my job, so I'm kind of picking it up right now. But I think it comes big into Angular. Yeah. Like, uh, Angular is monolithic as well. For yeah. yeah. JavaScript. But like I mean, uh, I'm, the name spacing seems pretty good because it's all ng something. Yeah, see and that's there's good. Some other stuff. Yes. Yeah. So I was wondering if you knew anything about it because I'm a bit new to it myself. Yeah. But that's uh, that's something that didn't show up here, I guess. Yeah, because no one suggested it to me. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a problem because I don't use any frameworks. Mm -hmm. I'm just relying on other people. So well, I have come across it, and the ng name spacing is is perfect. Mm -hmm. it's exactly what you should be doing. Yeah. I mean, you should be doing this in your own code, not just anyone else's. Because someone else at some point will have to maintain your code. It may be you six months from now. So you can either make you six months from now happy or you can make, make you six months from now sad. I think when it comes to Angular, it's more towards the JavaScript name, name spacing, not so much on the CSS side. No, even in the CSS, it's nice. The CSS yeah. Yeah. There's been a lot since I last touched Angular. Was it yeah. Angular 2? Or what? Yes, Angular 2. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah I, it's, it, I think it's, it's quite new because documentation is bloody horrible. Like I can't find anything in terms of like what the classes are and how the new system works. Let's do all Angular. So yeah. The the uh, the path to Angular two was nasty anyway. Yeah. So, so it's not really surprising. So um, yeah, I'm not surprised that like there isn't much to find. You're a warrior. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks. We chose React. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm going to choose. I, I didn't have that choice, but yeah, I would have, but I don't have that choice. Yes. Sorry, um, you mentioned accessibility, um, and like I was only familiar with accessibility in the sense of, like color contrast, but you yes. were talking about um, navigating websites without a mouse or a headset. Yeah. Like that. Um, like, could you elaborate why that's important? Because I've never heard of Not everyone can use a mouse, which is significant. Not everyone can use a mouse. Very so, like, disabled. You don't have to be disabled. You could have a child in one arm and be using 
like one hand or something. Section five is already built. Yeah, there's a there's a really good Microsoft uh, poster that they put out recently from their uh, accessibility team, showing that everyone is is disabled at some point or other. Um, like there are a lot of reasons that you don't realise until you're affected by it. I mean, uh, for me, um, I've got a five-year-old son. When I was pushing him around in a pram, I realised that the ramps are awesome. Prior to that, it's like stairs. No, stairs, who cares? <laughs> when you're on wheels, suddenly you love ramps like nothing else. Lifts the same. You see able-bodied people walk into lifts that don't need them, and suddenly you hate them. It's like, I need to get in there. You can take the stairs. You can go on the escalator. I have to get in there. That's when you notice that stuff. Um, keyboard accessibility is especially for people who can't see because you can't use a mouse. Um, but even if you're able bodied, like, you can just want to use your keyboard. Like, there's no good reason why you can't support it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I just throw this at you. Sorry, something about, you know, like, what percent of people use keyboard? Or, like, well, it's US stats 20% of everyone roughly is has some kind of disability. Um, I can't remember the details. I did a talk on this at last year's talks at uh, CSSConf. You can find the video online and stuff. Um, yeah, I can't remember the details of that. But if you look at the RA rules towards accessibility, like if you want to be compliant with the guidelines, you need to have keyboard support. And it's mm -hmm. not. Sorry, can I just mm -hmm. finish my point? Oh. Uh, section 508. Yes. Yeah. Based on this, I Okay, yeah. But it's it's not that hard. Like it, it's daunting at first when you look at it. And this was the nature of my talk at the CSS Conf last year. Like actually making your things accessible is not that difficult if you put some effort in. Which is all more frustrating that when you see I'm pointing at the same so <laughs> when you see frameworks like if you're putting a framework out there for other people to use, put the effort in and do it, it's not difficult. If you're looking for uh, like an autocomplete control. If you, instead of Googling you know, autocomplete uh, JavaScript or something or HTML, just put ARIA or accessible in there and you'll get one. Uh, it's not that hard. All more reason. Like, there's no good excuse for Bootstrap not to be completely accessible. It's just a, an awful failure. jQuery UI, on the other hand, is really good for some of those controls because they put the effort in. So you've been talking a lot about making your own like uh, framework. Um, I, this is a bit of a huge question, but like, how do you write documentation to let others start Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, I, I know like you probably can't answer that in like a couple of minutes. Right now, but maybe. <laughs> it's more like, how do you write the style guide? Like, what are the rules? Like, does one person maintain it, or like one person write the whole thing and then they get more? There was a, a poll. Uh, so yeah, um, CSS tricks did a couple of years ago, I think asking how many people maintain CSS within a corporation. It's usually a handful. Um, I know here at CXA, I limit any proper CSS editing to myself and to others, because uh, I don't trust anyone else to go near it. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, you've got to be really careful about it and really tight about it. If you maintain, like what we do uh, with us, uh, we have a separate library with our CSS code, which I'm building at the moment. Um, and everything else consumes it in the same way you consume one of these. So if you structure your code that way, you get a lot of benefits out so, of it. So when you say you make your own framework, it also includes like this kind of page with all yes. of this. Things. And there are tons of different libraries out there to generate your um, style guides for you as well, yeah. depending on the level that you want to actually achieve. Yeah. That's a, that's a completely separate topic all again. Yeah. 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 Um, we're hoping, because there's no, not going to be a, a CSS comp this year, we're hoping to have a um, like a talk CSS Excel or something like that. Oh, we're all the same now, aren't we? Oh, okay, so we're going to be different. But I still want to get Anna and here. Yeah. Yeah. If you look up Brent Frost and Debenham, uh, I think that's like style guides to IO. Yeah. There's tons of material there for what to do, and it really depends. Style guides mean different things to different people, mm -hmm. so it depends on what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah.